Welcome to the Biker Angle, your source for everything going on in the biker community. We've now added timestamps to the video. So if you want to hear a particular story, all you have to do is click on it in the description box. If you don't know what the description box is, it's right below this video. Management has lost control at... WA's notorious Hakia prison with common Cheryl bikies treating it like a clubhouse. This, according to prison guard claims, a policy of housing gang members together in order to reduce disruption had emboldened some of the state's most violent criminals. According to an exclusive report, in the West Australian. Those that don't know what a bikey is, that is bikies, you know, bikers here, but it's outlaw bikers there. At least seven Hakia inmates have died inside the jail this year. Three of those deaths have been classified as unnatural, including that of Elf Dion Eddies, 46, who died in hospital two weeks after being ambitiously assaulted in February. Eight prisoners have been charged over his murder. Why didn't they just say that earlier instead of unnatural? The prison guards say gang problems are so bad that alumn staff were bashed by inmates on a single day that la oh god that was bad last month and that 20 year veterans of the job are crying heads in their hands and they had a crisis point that's pretty bad they warn there will only be more death and violence at the prison unless action is taken the department of justice said more than 450 new prison officers were to be recruited over the next 18 months and policies were in place to ensure rival gangs were separated from each other. They should come down to the United States prison system if they think it's bad there. <laughs> Is this your grandfather's Harley Davidson by Larry Light? Has Harley Davidson met its Oldsmobile moment? The venerable motorcycle brand faces the delirious consequences of demography. This is by Forbes, by the way. On the one hand, Harley continues to be reliant on the defining mood, spirit, and discretionary spending of baby boomers. He goes on to say... Think of Marlon Brando's Outlaw Motorcycle 1953 film, The Wild Ones, Jack Nicholson, and Dennis Harper in the 69 film Easy Riders, and the Honnenly Sad Rolling Stones Elmont Concert. Today, many baby boomers are aging out of the motorcycle lifestyle. Meanwhile, Harley Davidson is experiencing difficulty generating relevance with millennials and their younger cohort. That's because they're a bunch of mm hmm. The situation Harley Davidson faces is more than the classic case of filling a leaky customer bucket. How to build on the core brand values while also appealing to younger more ecologically focused, less traditionally minded, more cash-strapped cohorts, unless the brand can bring younger customers into the franchise, it has the dismal prospect of becoming the Oldsmobile of motorcycles. It's funny, you know, just 10 years ago they were the best, now all of a sudden they are losing a lot, man. It tells you about their business model. Harley Davidson is an American icon. However, let's take a quick look back at how General Motors sunk the Oldsmobile brand. How you guys like the Oldsmobile, man? I thought they were cool. Olds was the 1897 creation of Ransom E. Olds, 
In 1908, Mr. Olds sold the brand to General Motors, as difficult as this may be to imagine today in a world of Prius, Lexus, Leaf, and Tesla. In the 1970s and 80s, Olds was the third most popular car brand, selling over a million vehicles a year. Well, maybe General Motors should make a better car. Uh, anyway, <laughs> in a wistfully scenario comic 2009 article, McClellan pointed out how culturally significant Oldsmobile was in America. Quote, the average Olds driver was a 62-year-old who wanted to advertise that he's achieved a respectable, but not standardized <laughs> between Cadillacs and a standardized type of living. Cutlasses and 98s were seen in the parking lots of every public golf course, Methodist church, and state college football games in America. <laughs> McClelland reminded us that TV detective Joe Mannix, 67 through 75, starring Mike Connors, drove a custom Tornado and the rock band Rio Speedwagon, whose heyday was in 67 to 80, took its name from the Rio Speedwagon, a light delivery truck, the Ransom E, Old's ancestor of the modern pickup truck. I don't care, F-150s, they rule. Sorry, guys. As younger drivers expressed little interest in purchasing Old's vehicles, General Motors recognized that it needed to update the Oldsmobile's image. The Washington Post said in 1993, Oldsmobile's full-size 98s and mid-size 88s were, quote, primarily bought by midlifers and senior citizens and hold no promise for attracting a younger crowd. But you know what? You put on some rims on them, oh, they look good. Oldsmobile's answer for rejuvenating its brand identity was the 88 advertising slogan, the now classic, this is not your father's Oldsmobile. Even though it hung around for another 12 years, the consensus was that the slogan was the beginning of the end for Oldsmobile. The quote, grandfather slogan, accomplished two things. The first one, among younger car buyers, the slogan reinforced why they did not want to own an Oldsmobile. And two, it embarrassed and alienated the current loyal or owner base. Yeah, I bet that uh, made them mad. <laughs> so, double jeopardy, alienate the core while also turning off new customers, Oldsmobile could have been saved. The brand had a great heritage of engineering innovation. For example, the Oldsmobile V8 engine uh, proved so popular it came to be known as the Rocket. The brand had some exciting products in the pipeline. But the brand bronzed its old-fashioned image with mistaking, mismarketing, before the new vehicles hit the showroom floor. So you can kind of see why Harley Davidson is trying to get away from us core branders. Brands can be revitalized. Harley Davidson has several opportunities for brand revitalization. Again, everybody, this is coming from Ford's magazine, so take it as it will. One, the brand has many core elements that can be contemporized. In core spirit, it's compelling regardless of age cohort. Harley-Davidson is a mindset, a set of attitudes, not an age group. Basic values are enduring and cross age groups. Baby boomers will feel regenerated. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of these mid guys in their 50s and 60s getting their first ones. And younger riders will connect. Pirate, the professional service accounting company, 
recently published survey results that indicate the degree to which there is cross-generalizational crossover. Yeah, I'm being, uh, you know, making fun of it. Anyway, <laughs> who cares about generational? Uh, two, for many uh, younger consumers, the big, brawling Harley-Davidson bike is less appealing and not affordable. Well, they got that right, not affordable. Can't even get mid or mid-age guys get it. The brand is nearing two dual-purpose models, highway and off-road capable, and there are nine more sporty models in the pipeline. This is the time to revitalize the brand to make it contemporary. The brand's enduring values during the Nissan 1999-2002 turnaround, Carlos Gons used the revamped, re-image, redesign. 280Z to demonstrate to Nissan buyers that the brand is in a revitalization mode. That car stunk. Are you kidding me? Three. Harley Davidson can redefine what Harley Davidson writing is all about. In the 1960s, the allure of freedom from conventions was a driving force. Cars were for parents. VW minivans and bikes were expressions of the age of Aquarius. Oh my God, the guy riding this thing. Uh, today, that the freedom can be channeled into riding as a sport, challenging, entertaining, pastime, and competitiveness. You know, he actually got that right there, man. Get that uh, flat track going good. A lot of younger people have been raised on extreme sporting events, some of which are off-road motorcycling, competitive events, instead of just relying on the iconic, traditional Harley rallies. Oh my, now they're going after rallies, guys. Also create Harley active events. Again, flat tracking. Best way to do it. Brands are not monolithic, never changing monuments. Brands are dynamic promises of relevant and trustworthy brand experiences. These are the guys that are actually running Harley into the ground, the guys like this talking. And there is nothing quite as <laughs> as riding on a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Make the American classic appeal to all classes of Americans. Again, you wonder why Harley's in trouble? It's guys like that that's uh, running the company. Five mil Bill Mista in New Berlin. Iron Town Harley Davidson in New Berlin shut down its day to day operations, at least temporary. This is the one that uh, is also with Border Tracker in Janesville. According to a post on the business's Facebook page on Tuesday, July 16th, the closure was met with surprise and concern for the employees of the former. Hales Harley Davidson dealership. Notice a lot of dealerships are closing lately and occurred amid an ongoing lawsuit against the owners by Harley Davidson seeking millions of dollars in unpaid debts. Hmm. Same thing again happened to Border Tracker. I'm really upset, said Teresa Davis of Milwaukee. Well, I was here last week said Craig Basil of West Alis. I just couldn't believe it. It's my hope that this will be a short ter term thing as they get things sorted out, said Carl Zampala of Greenfield. There was a tent in the parking lot, but no bike night on Tuesday night. God forbid no bike night at the dealership where do you go maybe try riding so i rode up here because we were going to come up here on bike night but i guess we're not said basil you think uh yeah closed door means no bike night people to come to a harley dealership and it's not open on a tuesday at three o'clock is unheard of what happened that you're not open said davis you know what? It is funny how bikers hang around these dealerships. The message posted on social media was also posted on the door. 
Quote, it was a bit of surprise. I had dropped the bike off about quarter to seven last night for normal maintenances, said Sam Pella. You know what? That is the worst feeling in the world I couldn't imagine. Hours later, Sam Pella said he got an email saying the dealership was going to be closed, making for a sleepless night. Yeah, it's called at that time, get a brick, throw it through the window, and get your bike. Fortunately, I was out on some business today, and when I got back to my phone, there was a voicemail waiting for me. Basically said, come and get your bike, said Sam Pella. <laughs> They're uh, anxious to get that money, aren't they? But uh, that is your biker news for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.